people discovered a new world in the depths of the ocean, but they had no idea they would encounter prehistoric monsters. The film begins 65 million years ago with a multitude of small reptiles feeding on the seashore. Suddenly, a Tyrannosaurus Rex emerges from the jungle, causing the animals to scatter in different directions in a bid to escape. Unfortunately, the T-Rex manages to catch one of them. Unexpectedly, a gigantic megalodon rises from the water and easily swallows the dinosaur. The action shifts to the present day, five years after the events of the first film. Jonas Taylor is training in one of the cargo containers in the Mariana Trench, the deepest trench on Earth, as he fights environmental crimes. He emerges from the water, trying to remain unnoticed, and takes photos of people illegally dumping radioactive waste into the ocean. Next, he sneaks into one of the cabins and photographs what appear to be important documents. In the room, there is also a cage with a very talkative macaw parrot whose cries attract the attention of one of the men. I'm here from the home office. Bullshit. Jonas momentarily distracts him, then deals with the other lawbreakers, skillfully avoiding their attacks. However, the ship's captain rushes onto the deck and demands that his men do not let Jonas leave alive. They all end up on top of the cargo containers. Cornered, Jonas informs the crew that they are all under arrest and suddenly leaves the ship. I'll see you in court, yeah? The men are convinced that Jonas won't survive because to reach the shore, he would have to swim about 300 kilometers. However, Jonas is undeterred. Soon, an airplane, piloted by his friend Mac, appears directly above the ship. Jonas is saved as he boards through a hatch. They then land, and Jonas hands over all the evidence he's collected to Mac. The action shifts to the Oceanic Institute in China, where director Jiu Ming is testing a new underwater suit that grants a person incredible strength. This suit is about to undergo tests in the Mariana Trench. Then, his niece, Mei Ying, reminds him of the evening event and asks him not to be late. During the evening event celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Institute, Jonas and Mac also arrive and meet Jiu Ming. Hilary Driscoll, the Institute's financier, gives an introductory speech and hands the microphone to Jiu Ming, who introduces the guest to a gigantic female megalodon named Heiki. She was found injured as a juvenile and has now become the only specimen raised in captivity. Thanks to Heiki, the Oceanic Institute staff has learned a lot about megalodons and the depths in which they inhabit. Jiu Ming also expresses gratitude to the investors whose contributions helped create the technology that allows people to penetrate the thermocline, the layer of icy water separating Heiki's world from ours. Now, people can dive into the trench, which is more than 6,000 meters deep below sea level. The next day, Jonas, who is now raising Mei Ying, tells her that she can't accompany him to the deep sea station Mana 1 and dive into the trench because it's too dangerous. However, the girl tries to convince Jonas that she can handle it. So, he suggests that she go to Mana 1 and simply observe the dive. Suddenly, a security officer named Rigas bursts into the room and reports that Jiu Ming is training the Megalodon again. I'm conducting an experiment. It's the experiment, do I taste good? Jonas tries to persuade Jiu Ming that swimming alongside the Megalodon is a bad idea, but Jiu Ming is convinced that he and Heiki share a special connection. Jiu Ming wants to demonstrate how the Meg responds to commands, but the giant doesn't react to them and rapidly approaches the scientist. For a moment, the man disappears from view, and the Mana 1 team believes that the Meg has swallowed him. Fortunately, Jiu Ming reappears unharmed behind them. However, he soon confesses to Jonas that Heiki has been acting strangely for the past week. Meanwhile, the Meg manages to escape from its colossal aquarium. After breaking free, Heiki heads straight for the Mariana Trench. After some time, Jonas, Mei Ying, Jiu Ming, and the entire team head to Mana 1. Jonas and Jiu Ming prepare to dive 7,600 meters deep to collect rock samples and document new species. Two submarines descend into the depths, one carrying Jonas, Rigas, and Sal, and the other with Jiu Ming, Curtis, and Lance. Monitoring all parameters and safety is the engineer DJ, manager Mac, and assistant Jess stationed at Mana 1. Soon, Jonas notices that Mei Ying has secretly sneaked on board the submarine. He is furious with his stepdaughter and wants to abort the mission when suddenly Jiu Ming sees a rapidly approaching megalodon and realizes it's Heiki. The teams decide to accelerate and head for the thermocline, which is supposed to stop the giant. However, things don't go as planned. Heiki follows them, and Rigas detects several more wild megalodons nearby. Jiu Ming suggests changing the dive plan to understand what went wrong. Jess is unhappy about deviating from the course, but Jiu Ming is determined to explore an unfamiliar sector to uncover the reasons behind the Megalodon's strange behavior. This some dumbass shit, mark my words. Finally, Jiu Ming realizes that the Megalodons have entered their mating season, and Heiki's instincts have led her here. Suddenly, Sal reports that the scanners have detected an anomalous structure on the seabed. At first, everyone assumes it's the wreckage of a ship, but Rigas believes it's something like a deep-sea station. After scanning the object, they conclude it's a highly advanced structure. 
Suddenly, the sonar detects a submarine right above their subs. On it is a team of researchers, but they are illegally hunting for resources. Their leader, Montes, oversees the operation. Team members detect unknown objects nearby and soon realize that it's the crew of Mana 1, who have apparently discovered their station. Montes decides to destroy the evidence immediately to avoid capture and activates the explosive set by his team. Montes, don't do it! A powerful explosion triggers a rock slide, during which Montes attempts to flee. Additionally, Jess detects a rupture in the thermocline, where now there's a massive hole. This allows several megalodons to rise from the depths into the surface. Jonas and Jiuming's submarine sustain severe damage from the falling debris and soon lose contact with Mana 1. Mac instructs Jess to prepare a rescue submersible to search for the missing crew. However, Jess soon reports that the submersible is malfunctioning, suspecting that someone deliberately sabotaged the battery unit. She believes it won't be possible to fix the problem. Meanwhile, the crew in Jonas's submersible regains consciousness and realizes they have lost communication, oxygen, and heating. Rigas manages to repair the communication device, and Jonas informs Mac that they will don exosuits and be ready for retrieval. However, Mac disappoints his friend by stating that they won't be able to rescue them. Jonas then makes the decision to proceed on foot. Mac argues that it's too dangerous, and the exosuits have a limited oxygen supply, but Jonas is determined to take this last chance. Half that team is dead, and I'm not losing the other half. Jonas and his team exit the submersible and soon encounter Jiuming and the others, who have miraculously survived. They continue their journey across the uncharted ocean floor toward the station, while Mac instructs Jess and DJ to track down the saboteur as soon as possible. The team cautiously moves underwater when suddenly something grabs Lance, and he disappears from view instantly. Soon, the frightened crew spots Lance's helmet and realizes he didn't survive. They have no choice but to continue their journey. Meanwhile, Montes, aboard the damaged submersible, contacts his accomplice, who turns out to be none other than Hillary, the same person who spoke at the Oceanic Institute event. Montes informs her that he destroyed the Mana 1 crew, but Hillary somehow knows they are still alive, and if they make it to the station, they will face serious trouble. At Mana 1, DJ informs Mac that someone destroyed all the surveillance camera footage, making their investigation more challenging. However, Mac asserts that all the data is sent via satellite, so they can still access copies. Deep beneath the surface, the team has only around 400 meters left to overcome, but suddenly, Jiu Ming and Jonas notice suspicious movement nearby. They order everyone to run as the prehistoric creatures, the same ones T-Rex hunted millions of years ago, approach them at high speed. The team opens fire on the predators, but there are too many of them. Soon, Jiuming takes out a signal flare and repels them with its bright light. However, the light attracts the megalodons. Jonas throws the flare onto a steel structure, and the megalodon immediately destroys it. Taking advantage of the distraction, the team attempts to enter the station. However, one of the megalodons continues to pursue Jiuming and Sal. The girl is running out of oxygen, and she sacrifices herself to allow Jiuming to hide from the huge monster. Finally, they reach the station and try to seal the airlock, but the Meg keeps attacking. Earlier, due to the predator attacks, Curtis's helmet visor cracked, and now, just seconds before sealing the compartment, it can't withstand the pressure. The survivors make their way deeper into the mysterious station and discover that a corporation is illegally mining precious gems and metals, which are being sent to the surface in special capsules. Mei Ying manages to establish communication with Mana 1. Jonas informs Jess about their losses and tells her about the station. The team continues, and suddenly, Juming finds his research inexplicably present on this station. Soon, the team reaches the escape capsules, but they are malfunctioning. Then, the door behind them unexpectedly closes. At that moment, Jess contacts them again and reveals that she controls the station and has locked them in this compartment. She destroys the rescue capsules and offers Rigas the chance to save Mei Ying by shooting Jonas in the heart. Rigas aims at him but ultimately doesn't shoot, and Jess releases the last capsule. Then, Hillary contacts the team and informs them that soon, all of the Institute's technology will help them plunder the ocean and make billions. She begins to flood the compartment. Jonas decides to swim outside without a hydro suit to disconnect communication with the surface. Rigas argues that water doesn't compress under pressure, so if he has a bit of water in his mouth, he can survive for about 30 seconds. Anyone can do this, it's you. Jonas goes into the open ocean and spots a megalodon nearby. Suddenly, a terrifying reptilian creature attacks him. He reacts quickly and shoots at it. Jonas manages to take control of the station, but then he loses consciousness. However, Jonas survives. 
he regains consciousness and sees Montes in front of him, who wants to take revenge on him for his imprisonment. The sworn enemies engage in a fight, while the compartment continues to flood. After defeating Montes, Jonas finally opens the compartment and rescues his comrades. At the same time, three helicopters approach Mana 1, and, on Hillary's orders, they are there to clear the station. Mac gains access to backup copies and discovers that Jess is the traitor. Jonas and the team want to escape in Montes' submarine, but they need to distract the Megalodons for this. Juming decides to turn on all the station's lights to slip away unnoticed. He exits the submersible and rushes to the computers, blinding the monsters with the bright light. Within seconds, the Megalodons swarm the station, and Juming barely escapes. The strongest blows shake the submarine, and Rigas is ready to close the hatch without waiting for Juming, but Jonas is confident that he will make it. Fortunately, in the nick of time, Juming jumps into the hatch, and they leave the ocean floor. As the team passes through the thermocline, Juming finds explosives on board. They also notice a hole in the thermal layer caused by the explosions, which should gradually close. Can the Megs follow us through? I hope not. However, at this moment, a terrifying creature emerges from the depths behind them. Meanwhile, Montes is still alive and ascends to the surface with the help of an inflatable balloon. On Mana 1, DJ and Mac are still in the backup center, and suddenly, Jess and several mercenaries knock on the door. Mac is convinced that these people will kill them, and DJ comes up with a plan. They unexpectedly open the door and spray pepper spray in the intruders' faces, then immobilize the attackers with a taser and escape. Meanwhile, Jonas, Rigas, Jiuming, and Meiying arrive at Mana 1 but notice strangers on the deck. Jonas suggests finding Mac and DJ and assigns Rigas to locate a boat and anything that might be useful to them. Mac and DJ come up to the deck, and suddenly, they are attacked by mercenaries, but DJ knows what to do. DJ! However, there are more armed men, and they open fire. Mac and DJ jump into the water to save themselves. Then, upon returning to the ship, DJ retrieves a gun from his backpack, surprising Mac. Still, the mercenaries capture them. Suddenly, Juming appears in the corridor, pretending to be a hostage, and starts speaking in Chinese, which nobody understands. This distracts the mercenaries, and Jonas attacks them. Meanwhile, Montes arrives in the control center, where he meets Jess and the others. He reports that Jonas is still alive and on Mana 1. Jess orders the mercenaries to search the station and eliminate the team. Mei Ying and Rigas prepare a rescue boat and suddenly notice that three megalodons are approaching the station. They reach the surface before the breach closed. Jess and Hillary discuss this issue over the video link, and then Hillary offers Mei Ying a promotion and appoints her as the head of the institute. Suddenly, Hillary notices that the megalodon has come very close to the control center, but Jess assures her that the glass will withstand any attack. However, the giant creature proves otherwise. I was also thinking... Montes manages to escape from the control center, and the Mana 1 team is already leaving the station, trying not to attract the Meg's attention. A group of mercenaries also boards a lifeboat and starts the engine to reach Jonas and the others more quickly. Montes orders to silence the engines, or the Megs will notice them. One of the mercenaries aims at Jonas, but at that moment, their boat is swallowed by a megalodon. Meanwhile, the team accelerates, and Jonas prepares a harpoon with explosives in case they encounter the Megs. Juming realizes that there is an inhabited fun island nearby, and the Megs may reach it. Unsuspecting people are relaxing on the island and on a nearby boat when an unknown creature suddenly attacks their vessel. Jonas and the team arrive at the island and order people to get out of the water, but they don't take his word seriously. Montes, Hillary, and their mercenaries also land on the island, intending to eliminate Jonas. Huge reptiles attack Montes' group, and the Megs are getting closer to the shore. <laughs> Hillary, waiting for the mercenaries in the helicopter, hears gunshots in the distance and decides to exit. She calls for Montes and returns to the helicopter, but suddenly, two terrifying lizard-like reptiles known as snappers attack her and drag her into the forest. The Mana 1 team splits up, and Jonas gets on a jet ski to drive the Megs away from the shore and eliminate them with harpoons. Meanwhile, Montes' soldiers, Juming, Mac, Rigas, and DJ, accidentally find themselves in the same warehouse, hiding from the aggressive reptiles. Taking advantage of the situation, the mercenaries take them hostage and intend to kill them. However, Juming notices a button that opens the front door, and as a result, all the snappers attack the mercenaries. The Mana 1 team leaves the warehouse, taking an explosives bag with them. Juming and Mac set off to find the helicopter, while DJ calls for rescuers on the radio. Then, Juming distracts the lizards, and Mac runs to the helicopter. However, the massive reptiles attack Juming, and he barely manages to escape. At the last moment, they refuel the helicopter, but Juming falls to the ground. He uses a hose to spray the creatures, and Mac fires a rocket launcher, causing the lizards to explode. 
At the same time, Jonas, having already destroyed one Megalodon, hunts the remaining ones. However, Montes opens fire on him. After a fierce battle, Jonas manages to defeat his enemy by pushing him directly into the jaws of a Megalodon. A gigantic octopus starts attacking those resting on the beach, and Mei Ying is in danger. Jiu Ming descends to save her, but the sea monster proves to be stronger and smashes the helicopter with a single blow. Jiu Ming struggles with the octopus and attaches explosives to it, but he survives. Then, another megalodon appears and drags the monster to the depths. Jiu Ming and Mac are still in the water, and Jonas comes to their aid. Suddenly, he notices another nearby megalodon and destroys it using the helicopter's rotor blades. Then another lizard emerges on the beach and almost devours Mei Ying, but DJ appears. Suddenly, a third megalodon approaches Jonas, Jiu Ming, and Mac, and it turns out to be Heiki. Jiu Ming then gives her a command, and she, fortunately, swims past them. Finally, the rescuers arrive on the island, while the Mana 1 team and the other survivors celebrate their victory over the ocean monsters. Do you think the heroes might have relaxed too soon? What will happen to Heiki, who remains at large? Share your thoughts in the comments, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.